Welcome back to Parsons and Parsons with me. I'm going to just do a chat with you, Q&A, work along with me, and try to cover some of your questions while I'm working. I need to pick peppers in the garden. I'm gonna do some sausage, pepper, and onion freezer meals because I've got a lot of peppers out here and I picked up some discounted sausage. So that's what's on my agenda. Look at this, peppers, it's amazing. I've got to dig through, oh, there's more over here. All right, so I'm gonna work on this and I'm gonna chat with you guys. I think first and foremost, the question that I get repeatedly asked all the time is, are you guys gonna have any more kids? And yes, we are gonna have more kids. Um, if you guys haven't noticed, the videos have been a little sparse these days and that is, what's up? You gonna help me pick? Yes. That is because we are expecting next spring. How exciting is that? Who's I bet you bells. Yeah, um, bells and bananas, please. Okay. I bet you guys didn't know you were gonna turn on this video and find that announcement. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that is um, part of the reason why things have been a little slow on parsnips and parsimony. Um, it's been a really difficult couple weeks. Feeling really, really sick. And everything has suffered. My garden has suffered. If you can't tell from the amount of weeds yeah, out I'm here, just pulling out a few of the big ones, so I can get. So I can see. Yeah, right I know, right? Thing. You can't even see what I'm picking here. But there aren't a lot of weeds. They're just really big. So that is one of the questions you guys ask me all the time. And yes, we will be expecting another little one sometime in the early spring. And I'll probably be doing some pregnancy updates for you guys and filling you in all in on oh, that. That's an impressive weed right there. Oh, don't shame me. <laughs> this is not how my garden's supposed to look, but that's what happens when you're not feeling good. A couple good. peppers underneath um, here. Okay, need? thank you. Well, we're doing, we've got those packages of brush. We've got several pounds, so. We are finding that critters are eating our peppers in here. One of the hazards of not staying in the yeah. garden much these days. Here's another one, Art. Thank you. I have learned a very valuable lesson this year in my garden and I didn't realize what a difference this made this year versus last year and that is to use tomato cages on peppers and eggplants because they have gotten so tall they all sprawled over and now the animals are eating them because they can get to them. So learn from my mistakes, note to self, next year tomato cages from all my peppers. You know and that's how you learn. Here's another one right here. In the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? I think Charity went back inside, honey. Just stay there, okay? I know there's a lot of stuff in here. You gotta stay out right now until mommy can get the paths back because that's not a path, honey. Okay? So just wait, please. Thank you. I think that's a I think that's a full load. Go ahead and get started and I'll answer your next question. Another question I get asked frequently is how do you get your kids to cook in the kitchen with you? And I would just say the fact that I'm in the kitchen all the time makes them want to be in the kitchen with me all the time. And so age appropriate tasks, I just have them help me. Like if my kids were here right now, they would be helping me weigh all the peppers. It's something Daniel can put them in the bowl, he can help, he can be right there with me. And then I could have the kids wash them for me, pop the tops off for me. So you start with age appropriate tasks and then, you know, move from there. Sprinkle a little over here, not all in one face. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Can I help? There you go. Yeah, you can let, let Lily, or Grace. Let Grace help a little bit too. Here, Grace, you can take a little pinch. Looks like we have a little bit right here. Now we need to fight at the same time. All right, I think that's good. What do you think? Does that look good? Yeah. Okay, let's put it in the oven. We need a little bit right there. Right there. How's that? Is that better? Okay, let's put it in the oven. Okay, watch out, Gracie. I'm gonna open the hot oven. Stay back. Okay. okay, thank you, Daniel and Grace. We still are doing the garden journal. I have no idea how much we've actually gotten. I would say we're well over 500, probably closer to 750. We haven't picked everything, and I'm hoping we'll hit the 1,000 pounds. I mean, even if we hit 
what we hit last year, which was 1,042. That's still a fabulous number. I mean, we were thrilled with that last year. I was just hoping for more because we had expanded the gardens. But I can't do it all, and neither can Art. So we're just going to be, we're really thankful for what we did get. It's been a great year for peppers, as you can see. Um, the only sad thing is I wasn't able to keep up with them. And you guys saw the critters have gotten into them a little bit. Another question you guys asked was how do you balance homeschooling, gardening, housework, just life in general. And if you, if you watch this channel for any period of time, I think you guys probably know that we are year-round homeschoolers. So we have times where we take breaks when appropriate and then we're schooling when other people are not schooling. And we just found that after having, when did we start doing year-round schooling? A long time ago, I don't remember. Probably after Grace was born. Because I remember Charity, John, and Peter, we really did focused schooling just like the normal school system did. And then when we started having um, more children, that, that became extremely difficult. <laughs> John's making signs. All right, two more minutes for the pizza or it's going to be a little bit longer? Five minutes. All right. I'll see what I can tell you guys in five minutes before it's lunchtime. So that's how we balance it is just doing it year round. And we have just times in our schedule where we're not doing school. So the first trimester of this pregnancy, we didn't really do school. It was just, I was very, very sick. And now we're back to doing that again. And that just works, works best. We don't do a nine to three schedule like um, school districts, we believe that kids can learn in all ways of life, particularly in the elementary years. When they're older and they're high school, they do have their assignments, they have deadlines to meet, things like that. But with the crew that I have right now, because Charity and John are fully graduated, with the crew we have right now, we just, we do a lot of exploring, we do a lot of reading. Don't ever discount the power of reading. We visit the library a lot and it works. It works really well for us. So, Art, yes. folks are dying to know. I know we've had this question for years. How do we survive? How, our income, where does it come from? Is it mostly YouTube or is it mostly your shop? Well, both. Yeah, we have multiple streams, what sources yeah, of income. It's do. not just YouTube. It's just we found that that works best for our family. And it really was extremely preventative when I know a lot of you guys were affected at the beginning of COVID and when everything shut down, that was really a difficult time. And it was difficult for us, but because we had multiple sources of income, none of them, some of them got shut down, some of them didn't. And so we were still able to survive on that principle. It doesn't work for everybody. It works very well for us. Okay, next question. Somebody asked how we get projects done around here or how I have time to get projects, whether it be gardening or reupholstering. And one thing to remember is YouTube, we do get a small commission from YouTube for doing our videos. So when I'm factoring in timing and I'm filming projects like that, that's also part of my work time, if that makes sense. Um, the kids, I, I wasn't able to do as much of this when I had little, little guys. That was really hard. I have older kids who are able to just kind of keep an eye on the littlest one, like Daniel right now. Dan although Daniel's not really a problem anymore because He's just, he's at that age where he can just stay right by me. He can play with his trucks. I mean, he's really an easygoing kid. So, you know, being able to budget my time for uh, work time that actually accomplishes projects is part of the reason how we get projects done. I would say that art is extremely high energy. So, you know, he never gets, he rarely gets tired. I won't say he never gets tired, but he rarely gets tired. And so, but from the time he gets up to the time he goes to bed, I would say you're going full speed, wouldn't you? Yes. Like right now, we're waiting yep. for the pizza to cook. He saw, I, 
I mean, not, not to correct you, Janelle, but there are a lot of projects we don't get yes. done. You guys only see the projects that do get done. And don't forget the power of editing and time lapse and everything else here on YouTube. You know, we try to have intense focus, but look at the snail's pace challenge. The yeah. kitchen was supposed to be oh, yeah. done. Was that right May 2020? Back, background. Yes, cabinets are not done. <laughs> so. so don't forget that we struggle just as much as you guys do when, you know, you're trying to budget your time. How do you get projects done? Well, we have intense bouts of focus on one project, but sometimes we're not able to complete it. It's like the kids' photo album that I did last year for Christmas. I got all the way, all my pictures done up until Thanksgiving, Christmas, which I didn't have when I gifted this. But you know what? I haven't gotten back to it. <laughs> so I'm, it's just, it's reality. And I would say do the best you can. If you can do 20 minutes at a time, and that's all you have, and you have like two, uh, two or three 20 minute segments, that's an hour a day. There is a lot you can accomplish in one hour. And it's, sometimes it's hard when you're in the middle of a project thinking, I only wanna work on this for 20 minutes because I'm gonna get interrupted. But if you don't do anything in that 20 minutes, then you got nothing accomplished. So I think tackling it in bits and pieces if you can. For me, that's how it works best. When I was reupholstering the chair, I'd be like, I want to get all of the um, cording done today. It wasn't a huge task, but that's all I knew I had time for. And by, and by breaking it down into those smaller pieces, it makes it more manageable. So we're not getting it done as fast, but at least we're making progress and heading the right direction. Baby steps. If you follow me on Facebook, Instagram, you always see me talking about baby steps. Iris asks, how do we keep our hens laying all fall and winter? Fresh hens, so if you are, all of our new chickens, what did we get this year? 30? A lot. Um, I think we got 30. 10 26. For, how many? 26. Okay, 26. 26 new hens this year. When they are that first year, so they're not even a year old, chickens don't molt. So they don't go through that molting period in the fall like our other hens will, which makes them stop laying. So this year we won't have any lull in eggs in this fall season. Winter time, most of the time the chickens slow down, partly due to lighting. You can't do a lot about that unless you want to leave lights on in your coop. But that tends to wear the hens out because they don't have that natural rest time for their bodies. And we found that with our first flock, we left the light on so they'd produce all winter long. Which they did. They did, they did great, but they didn't last as long. So we've kind of gone more to a natural way of how chickens would be in just their regular environment, letting nature take its course, which means fewer eggs in the winter time, but then an abundance of eggs in the spring and summertime. We do feed our chickens cracked corn in the winter time to help boost their metabolism. So they still do lay some eggs. It's not as uh, prolific as they are in the springtime but we found when it gets really cold usually January February and it's going down into those single digits or below zero that corn just helps boost their metabolism keeping them warm and it, it keeps them happy too because they they get a little stir crazy this time of year it, they don't like to go out in the snow so giving them the corn they can scratch in the hay and it's a win-win situation Okay, nobody eat your pizza, honey. We're gonna eat lunch, and then I'll be right back to answer some more Q and A's. I'm back, lunch is over, and I'm gonna show you how I assemble these uh, freezer meals for the sausage, peppers, and onions. It's super easy. If you guys ever see a bargain on sausage at your store, this is the best way. I love it this way, to make sausage and pepper onions freezer meal. It just is really simple. Obviously, if I'm pregnant and not feeling hot, and I'm doing this, you guys can do this. I have three of these bratwurst. These, to us, it's all the same. So, um, I have three of these packages. I'm gonna start out with three bags, and then I have all of these peppers. I'm not sure if this is gonna be three bags worth or four bags. If it's four bags, I do have more brats here that I can use. But for now, I'm gonna start out with three, and I'm gonna put, these are just peppers, um, banana peppers and bell peppers. The banana peppers are not spicy. They're just sweet banana peppers. So I'll divide these up between the three bags.
To each of these bags, I'm gonna add one sliced onion. I'm gonna cut those up right now. And I've added the peppers, the onions, they're all in there. The last thing to add is just the sausage and I'll throw the, all of that box in here and then we'll just zip it up and freeze it and that's all there is to it. SPOs. Anyone want to guess what that means? <laughs> Sausage, peppers, and onions. Yes, Art did that for me. That is his code, and we'll remember what that yes, means. Yes, I know what it is. Everybody knows what SPOs are around here. And when I go to cook these, you're just going to dump the whole bag into the crock pot and turn it on either low or high, depending on how much time you need these done in, and just let them cook away. Serve them with some homemade hoagie rolls, and they are delicious and easy. Thank you, you are. Put them in the freezer. You're welcome. Next question: How do you stay motivated to be frugal? <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> we'll give really them our easy. secret. Oh, what is our secret? I don't know. We just are. I, um, I, think, I think it's a way of life. It's a way of life, and it's just necessity. I, think I mean, there's just not a lot of extra laying around, so there's no other option. And also, I think you and I were both raised yes. in a, a probably low middle income. Family. Your parents were extremely thrifty, yes. and my parents didn't need to be thrifty by the time I grew up, but they started out, as so many of you guys, you're in the same boat, you don't have a lot, and things are tight, and so they learned to be very careful with what they had, with no debt, and that just got passed on to us. I was... Yeah, I think our big secret is no debt. Um, and, and then that helps a lot. And when you're debt free, that's extremely motivating to stay out of debt mm -hmm. because there's a freedom to it. Not having to live with always, I mean, we will be able to make that next payment or we'll just charge it because it does. Even if you don't consciously think about debt, it sits on your shoulders and it lives with you wherever you go. So once you're free of that, <laughs> it's a huge motivation to not having to go back. I got a question for you. Hey, what's the question? They want to know our ages. Um, our average age is 43. <laughs> there you go, average age, 43. That makes us spring chickens, right? Right. <laughs>